to everybody around the world watching this. Absolutely horrific. Well, this wait, Kevin, Kevin, but wait, hold on month. a second, Kevin. Trump what will would be gone the, one day. Hold, this hold attorney's on a second. general will I, be gone one day. And this I is what you want to tell people around the world. I have a wonderful voice and it won't be talked this over. Hold, Kevin O'Leary, I would like to this hear you have to not say, but America. what are you doing? I, not but, America. But it's, it's not, not America, America, but it is the Laura Coates live show, and I am speaking. So that will be the rule, not Venezuela, not nowhere else. Fine, but it's Laura Coates live. And hello, my name is Laura Coates. The question to everybody. Well, there it is. I have much more to show you from that edition of, as she said, Laura Coates live, where she treated in that moment. Kevin O'Leary, the way that he deserves to be treated. And I will say, just for logistical reasons, to keep these shows moving correctly, the correspondents or the people being interviewed do have to let the host speak whenever they try to jump in to sort of organize things. Because you'll see it was a debate between the other panelists and Kevin O'Leary, in a sense. And so then Laura Coates has to jump in to ask questions and keep things moving. And the fact that he get, just kept shouting, it's not America, this is not America. She then correctly pointed out, you're right, this is the Laura Coates Live uh, show. You love to see it. Okay, before playing this second clip, Kevin O'Leary, I, all I knew about him before was that he was the Shark Tank dude. And now, I don't know if that's drying up and he wants something else. And he's becoming sort of a just MAGA guy and is going on Fox News constantly and going on other networks defending Trump aggressively and calling out the horrible tragedy, the tragedy that is the fraud uh, decision in New York. And we'll talk more about that afterwards. But there, O'Leary saying this is un-American and it's horrifying the world. Yes, the world is very disturbed that someone's being held accountable for engaging in fraud. I have much more to say, but here is more. Uh, when the other panelist gets to jump in, this is Catherine uh, Rample, and she had this to say. The question I want to ask you on this point, though, is what does the reverse say, Kevin, if they do not take action? And I, I hear your point about you believe there's no fraud and that everyone was made whole, but a judge found otherwise. And so given that, Catherine, to Kevin's point, can you address what your opinion is on the issue? Because your big major concern seems to be what happens if this is not followed through by James or the courts? What message would that sound? You seem to think that's, that's anti-American. Yeah, look, I'm surprised that Kevin is wasting his good name defending fraud and lies, which I am convinced Kevin, you have not committed. Uh, I don't understand why are you defending uh, the actions of someone who has committed these actions. Uh, that, again, there is ample, ample evidence that he has done this. And the idea that just because, you know, the, the banks themselves uh, may have been in on the fraud uh, doesn't necessarily make it any better. I mean, every single um, borrower who played by the rules, who at, who honestly uh, reported their income, their assets, their liabilities, they were, were put at a disadvantage by the fact that Trump lied and didn't play by the rules. Think about every other more productive borrower, what they could have done with these hundreds of millions of dollars, what you could have done with these hundreds of millions of dollars. And again, I believe you play by the rules. Trump does not. We have lots of evidence that he does not. This is bad for the marketplace. It is bad for other borrowers. It's frankly bad for the shareholders of these banks who didn't, didn't benefit from this. Maybe the bankers who helped him out with this fraud got a little fatter bonus, but the shareholders were not benefiting from this. The idea that it is good for the business environment, good for America to not enforce laws against fraud is just bizarre. Okay, so I will get to a clip a little bit later of Liz Cheney, so that's coming up. But before diving into our response to that, please make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. It's so important in growing the show. But she touched on Kevin O'Leary's argument, which is shouting it's un-American, but also that the banks weren't harmed. And so who really cares? And separate from, as Laura Coates said, the judge disagreeing that there was no impact of this fraud, obviously, you also have just a strange logical issue with that argument. If you're driving 
flying down the highway and you're just plastered. You're just so drunk and you're swerving and you don't actually harm anyone, but a police officer catches you, you, you should be held accountable legally and usually you would be. They're not going to say, well, I guess you haven't hit anyone yet, so who really cares about the law against drunk driving? So while I think he's missing the mark in one way, as Laura Coates and the panelists pointed out, of the broader implications of this fraud, even just the argument by itself, to me, doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Uh, but then his second big argument is this is going to scare businesses out of New York. This is so bad for business. It, so weird. If enforcing laws around fraud hurt, is something that businesses can't abide by, is something that would frighten businesses out of the state, then that's an issue with the businesses that we need to address. We don't want to allow for crimes to be committed or laws to be broken just because we're afraid of businesses leaving a state or a country. And then I don't know, again, like I said, Kevin O'Leary's background politically, but I would assume he's long been a conservative. Don't you remember, Kevin, that you used to be the party or your party used to advocate itself to be the party of law and order? And now all of these strange arguments trump's a former president so he can't be indicted or this fraud decision so horrible because of business being impacted in new york because apparently that many businesses are engaging in fraud according to o'leary someone look into o'leary's situation because that sounds a little bit suspicious all these abstract disconnected unrelated uh, in their significance, arguments to the core of the argument, which is, was the law broken? Law and order. Boom. Accountability. If there are laws on the books, which there are, about this sort of fraud, then they should be enforced. Isn't that the argument that the conservatives made for so long? I'm so confused. It's almost like there's a lack of honesty going on. And I do like that Laura Coates said, uh, said don't you think that there's a belief on the other side that not enforcing those laws just because it's Trump or because maybe businesses will be aggravated if you enforce laws, that would be un-American. And I think that's a perfectly great point. Now, while we're on the subject of Trump's legal woes, here was Liz Cheney reminding people of the importance of not forgetting about and not stopping the discussion about Trump's uh, civil rape case. Donald Trump today, as he's facing, um, you know, uh, these indictments on 91 counts um, as, as he's, um, you know, been, and don't forget this, been adjudicated by a jury of his peers unanimously to have committed sexual assault. Don't forget that. That is not a man that any of us should be giving our political support to. And in each of these cases... In, in each of these cases, for example, with those juries, the judges, judges have, in a number, on a couple of occasions with those juries, have required that the juries be anonymous. And that's because of the threat of violence and the threat of intimidation, um, which has not, never before in our history have we faced that kind of threat of violence that's being instigated by a president or a former president. So a lot of the remarks in that clip focused on the fact that, as she said, a jury determined in a civil trial that Donald Trump committed sexual abuse. The judge circled back and clarified that in the term rape and how we use it, this classified as rape. And that's what the jury found in this civil trial. And so then, not only in this conversation are we being reminded of the hypocrisy or the lack of an actual dedication to the principle of law and order from those defending Trump, but also party family values. And just please, please imagine <laughs> that, uh, or imagine a scenario where Joe Biden was found to have raped someone in a civil trial, do you think that the MAGA folks would say, ah, we don't care. Nah, we don't care. Who 
really cares about civil proceedings juries judges pff, who cares they want to do that that wouldn't be the response they would correctly be opposed to joe biden but here it doesn't matter at all to them just like the financial fraud make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel you can get the bonus show at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership